Activity 3, Moon Review. In 1988, Katie and Christy are children, and following Christy's birthday, she starts talking to an imaginary friend, Toby. And some strange things start to happen. Dennis, the boyfriend of the mother, starts setting up some cameras to try to figure out what exactly is going on. This is, once again, about the same. You know, this is basically, it's the same formula with all three movies. I would say that this is a better sequel than the second one was. The second one went too big and it just didn't feel quite as original. It felt too like too much of a retread. This one manages to feel less like a retread. It doesn't get to be too big and also quite, you know, critical, we actually like these people. We like the family. For those of you who don't already know what these movies are like, basically it's a very minimalistic approach to horror. It's found footage, if you didn't know that already. Basically everything you see has been recorded by a real person. Or so the concept goes. The scares are based on gradual buildup of atmosphere and you find yourself... You tend not to see anything clearly and when you do hear something you're not entirely sure what you heard or where it came from or what exactly made that sound or what it means. You know, what it, what is it the sound of? Or how could that sound be heard at that time? You find yourself trying to see something in every single frame, and sometimes you actually do. And you feel you find yourself listening really carefully to you know to try to discover the you know the source of you know to hear something else that might present a clue. This really grips the viewer, like with the first film, and to an extent the second. I really did not notice that time was passing as I was watching this movie. This being said in 1988 does present some potential problems for the whole we are taping everything kind of thing, and it should be noted that at times, like in the second movie, you see stuff that has been filmed where you really kind of wonder well, why did they bother to film that, but it, it is not that big of a deal. But the, you know, the, the technical aspects of this being in 1988, you know, it couldn't record for as long, and it was a different system, you know, analog versus digital. That is actually addressed in the movie. I kind of worried that they were just gonna ignore that. They actually do, and I am not an expert, but I didn't actually see anything in the movie that, you know, made me think, okay, this is clearly not 1988. In fact, there are a couple of things that they, you know, very specifically have that, you know, some people are going to notice as, okay, that is, that is very 80s right there. I'm not going to give it away. The acting is quite good. I was surprised by the child actors. I will say that they're not completely completely convincing all of the time. There are a couple of kind of obvious reads, but 
on the whole, they really, excuse me, they were really, really good. So were the adults, the characters, excuse me again, the characters are quite likable and the film doesn't only spend time building up the atmosphere, it also does establish what this family, you know, what this family is like, what the relationship between these people are, is. And it does bring in a couple of things that we did not see in the first two movies. It does also use some of the same methods and, you know, the overall approach is very much the same. It is a very, very creepy, very disturbing film. And I watched it, you know, opening night, packed theater, everyone was glued to their seats except for, you know, when we jumped out of them. This does provide some additional information that affects your, you know, things you saw in the other two. And it, you know, as these, you know, go, you know, both the second and this one provide some more information. The first one was pretty sparse in that area. But, you know, as, as this series progresses, we're evidently going to learn a bit more. I might kick myself later for saying this, but I could actually see there being a fourth movie. I think there are some interesting unanswered questions that could be answered whilst still preserving the overall mystery. And that is something definitely worth mentioning about this movie. It does explain things, it does provide some more detail, but it very much still leaves mystery. You, you know, you walk out of this movie and you're still, you still have questions that you want answers to and as usual I'm gonna say I don't think we should get answers to all of the questions. I think that would really take away from it. I think it's also worth noting that these movies can actually be watched independently of one another. If you watch this movie and you have not watched the other two, you don't even know a thing about them, you're going to be able to follow this movie. There is not... There are things that might have less of an impact on you, but you can actually just, after watching this, you can go watch the other two. They're not going to be ruined by watching this either. So all in all, if you like one of these movies, I would definitely suggest, you know, checking out the other two, and if you like the first one, I'm, I would say you're probably going to like this one as well. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.